Judges 18, word by word. In those days, there was no king in Israel. God is supposed to be king. And in those days, the tribe of the Danites. Now, they're a tribe that's, we're going to see in a moment, they're likened to the Antichrist. They are the first child born of Jacob by proxy. Rachel couldn't bear any children, so she handed over her handmaid. Hagar, the handmaid of uh, Abraham, or Abram, produced a child called Ishmael. And all the world is against him, and all he is against the whole world. Sought them an inheritance to dwell in. For unto that day all their inheritance have not fallen unto them among the tribes. So they're still in the land, they're still acquiring land, they're still battling and fighting to get land in the promised land. It's incomplete yet, still. And the children of Dan sent of the family five men from their coast. Coast is a borderline. Men of valor from Zora and from Estol to spy out the land and search it. And they said unto them, Go search the land. Who, when they came to Mount Ephraim, to the house of Micah, they lodged there. And that's from chapter 17. Now let's look, look at Genesis 41 for a moment and let's see Ephraim. Genesis 41, verse 50. I know we did the whole chapter in 17, but we're going to break it down with Dan. Genesis 41, verse 50. And this is a child of Jake, I mean, not Jacob, excuse me, I, Joseph, excuse me. Wow. Forgive me. And Joseph is in the land of Egypt. He's been made the second master of all Egypt. And we'll look at verse 45. 41-45. And Pharaoh called Joseph named Zaphnin Banita. And he gave him to wife, Asenath, the daughter of Poni Penith, priest of On. The Egyptian priest, a Gentile bride. And Joseph went over all the land of Egypt. And verse 50, same chapter. And unto Joseph were born two sons before the years of the famine came. And Asenath, the daughter of Panani, that earth, whatever, priest of On, that On's a God, small g, and bear unto him. And Joseph called the name the firstborn Manasseh. For God said he has made me forget all my toil and all my father's house. And the name of the second called Ephraim. For God has caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. So Ephraim is a half Egyptian child. That's important. So we've got Ephraim and we got Manasseh Hosea 4:17 Daniel Hosea Hosea 4:17 we looked at this last night and the latter day saints will say they're of Ephraim Ephraim 4:17 Seven hundred years minimum. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna challenge these dates. They're better than I am. But I'm gonna say at least seven hundred years minimum later. Ephraim's joined to idols. Let him alone. But what's chapter seventeen? What's chapter eighteen? Idolatry. And we have Ephraim. And we have Dan. Now, unless you really do your Bible study, you're not going to see the revelation. You're not going to see something. 
that will pitch you a long time ago, a uh, long time ahead. Dan and Ephraim, Revelation 7, 4. Now remember, it's idolatry. Dan is going to join in in this chapter of what Ephraim started. Dan is going to make this religion, he's going to make it a national religion. In Revelation 7, verse 4. You wouldn't see it yet unless you do study. And this is a difficulty one to find. And Revelation 7, 4, And I heard the number of them which were sealed. And there were sealed 144,000 of all the tribes of children of Israel. All right. Verse 5, Judah, Reuben, Gad. 6, Asher, Nephtali, Manasseh. 7, Simeon, Levi, Issachar. 8, Zebulun, Joseph, Benjamin. Isn't it ironic that Dan and Ephraim are missing out of that 144,000? And Hosea says, leave Ephraim alone. And when you read the prophecies in Genesis about Dan, Dan means judge. Daniel means Jehovah will judge. It said Ephraim was fruitful. Well, look at the fruits we got in Judges. So Judges 18, 666, verse 3. So Dan has gone out, they sent out spies, and they're lodging in Micah's house from chapter 17. And when they were by the house of Micah, they knew the voice of the young man to Levi. So he was very familiar with Dan. And they turned in thither and said unto him, Who brought thee hither? What are you doing down here? And what makest thou in this place? And what hast thou here? What's going on here? What are you doing? What are you? What? And what they're doing is they're looking at all the dollies. They're looking at all the aids of worship. And he said unto them, the Levite, the father called priest, chapter 17. Thus and thus dealeth, that's the first time that shows up, Micah with me. And he has hired me, and I am his priest. God hired no priest. All priests are Levites, but not all Levites are priests, and yet not one priest was ever hired. Or spoken about being hired. So now, through Micah, the priesthood has been made an occupation. And they said unto him, Ask counsel, we pray thee of God, that we may know whether our way which we go shall prosper. Okay, you're the priest, we know who you are. Now seek God. And the priest said unto him the famous words of all the popes, Go in peace. Before the Lord is your way, whether you go. And all popes and everything, peace, 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 peace. And there's been no peace. For the Lord says, There is no peace, saith the Lord, unto the wicked. And the pope gets down, goes somewhere, bends down, kisses the ground, and peace. And there's been many wars <laughs> since that Catholic Church. Constantine was a warrior. Then the five men departed and came to the Laish and saw the people were there, how they dwelt careless. That's the first time that showed up. Almost like Americans, Englishmen. And after the manner of the Zidonians. Now, unless you study your Bible again, you would not see what well, Zidon. Oh, this is another name in the Bible. 
and yet that name is put there. Now, they're not Zidonians, but they deal like the Zidonians. So we've got to run a cross-reference and find out what is going on here. We've seen Ephraim. We have seen Dan. We've seen they're not of the 144,000. There's the egyptian in this thing. Now, Zidonian, what is that? First Kings 16.31. And you wouldn't believe where the reference of this one is. First Kings sixteen thirty one. And you would not believe the reference here. In First Kings sixteen thirty one, the Bible says, "And it came to pass, as if it had been a light thing for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat." That's the two golden calves. Cow worship. Eat more chicken. I don't believe you said that. I did. That he took to wife Jezebel. Oh, Jezebel. The daughter of Ithbal, king of the Zidonians, and went and served Baal. Oh, look at the revelation there. We've got a Catholic Church 17, the religious of the Dalis. We've got Egyptianness. We got another tribe that is really obscured, Dan. And we've got Jezebel showing up. The Revelation, uh, there's one of the churches here. God speaks about Jezebel. I don't have this one marked. Uh, 220. 220. You could have a family that studies the Bible. They can help you. So, 218, Revelation 218. This is the church of the dark ages. Spiritual adultery. The church before that, I mentioned today, Pergamos means much marriage. The church before this, they joined and married the Catholic Church. And unto the angel of the church of Thyatira write, These things saith the Son of God, who has his eyes like unto a flame of fire, angry, and feet are like fine brass, a brownish color. I know thy works, and charity, and service, and faith, and thy patience, and thy works, twice, and the last to be more than the first, the works. They're doing good works. Notwithstanding, here's a problem, I have a few things against thee. Because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel. Now Jezebel hasn't lived 2,000 years. It's, a, it's the same technique of Jezebel, her Baal worship, her own prophets, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and seduce my servants. And commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed to idols. Oh! And that carries over into Judges 18. Idolatry, imagery, priests called fathers, apostasy. Jezebel had her own prophets, Micah has his own priests. And they battled God. And they're of Baal, the sun. And when you look at the Catholic Church, they worship the sun. S-U-N. B-A-A-L. So back in Judges 18, 7, after the man of Zidonians, you mean Baal worship. Quiet and secure. And there was no magistrate in the land. They had no rulers. They lived fancy free utopia. That might put them to shame in anything. So they were ruthless, they were reckless, and they were lawless. And they were far from the Zidonians and had no business with any man. And there came unto their brethren, to Zora and Eshtol, and their brethren said unto them, What say ye? They came back and report what they saw. And they said, Rise, that we may go up against them. 
for we have seen the land and behold it's very good and are you still come on let's get going be not slothful let's go to, and go to enter the and possess the land when you go you shall come unto a people secure to a large land for God has given it into your hands a place where there is no one of anything this is in the earth but without God they're gonna do it without God it sure ain't the God of Micah and ain't that Levite priest no more because he's not following God and they went from thence the family of the Danites out of Zorah and out of Eshcol 600 men appointed with weapons and of war and they went up and pitched in Kirch of Jerem in Judah wherefore they called the place Mahadan unto this day behold it's behind Kirch of Jerem uh, I have to check that I'm not really sure and they passed thence onto Mount Ephraim and came unto the house of Micah. Uh oh. Gotta make a stop at the church. And answered the five men that went to spy out the spy out the country of Laish, said to the brethren, Do ye know that there is in this excuse me, there is in these houses? Well, let's go back to seventeen five, chapter seventeen, verse five. And the man Micah had a house of gods. 1814, there are now houses. The religion is growing. He's gone from house to houses. And ephod, there's the ephod. That's what the Levite priest had. Imitation. The teraphim, that's the household gods. A graven image. And a molten image. Now, therefore, consider what ye have to do. And they turned to the word and came to the house of the young man, the Levite. Oh, he's got his own house now. He's not living in Micah's house. He's been given his own house. I don't know. I think maybe you call it a rectory or something like that. Even unto the house of Micah, and they saluted him. You know, most of all the presidents, I said most all, most of all, not all, when they come to that pope, they will salute him. They will give honor to the Catholic Church. If you were to see pictures of the president and there would be a religious emblem behind him, it would be a man in a white robe or a man with a, with a collar on backwards. Especially among the bushes. Why is that of all the religions? Why is that guy peering up behind our president of the United States of America, where they're right next to Maryland? Don't say Maryland. It's not Maryland. Maryland and Mary are spelt two different ways. Maryland is the established uh, colony of this country of the Roman Catholic Church. They like to hide under other names. You know, the Pope, John, Pope, Paul, and all that. That's not their real names. And they turned to the word and came into the house of the young man, the Levite, even unto the house of Micah, and saluted him. And the 600, that's an interesting number, isn't it? 600. Men appointed with their weapons of war, which are the children of Dan, stood by the entering of the gate. And the five men that went to spy out the land went up and came in thither and took the graven image and the ephod and the teraphim and the molten image and the priest stood in the entering the gate with the 600 men that were appointed with the weapons of war these five men go in there and they start stealing and the priest is standing there with the, with the soldiers Soldiers of Dan, arise and steal my gods. And these went into Micah's house and fetched the carved image, the ephod and the teraphim, and the molten image. Now, 
take that carve image and that molten image and let's go back to verse 14 at the end of the verse it says a graven image and a molten image what is that graven image it's also a carved image that's where you get tools and you carve it out a chisel a hammer you specifically make that image into what you want by a hammer and that is the first place in verse 18 carved showed up notice 1818 there is the carved image the ephod the teraphim the molten image then said the priest unto them what do ye what are you doing what are you doing and they said unto him hold thy peace let thy hand upon thy mouth you know you ever see the expression somebody zips their mouth or they put their hand in the mouth that comes out of a bible did you know that put your hands in your mouth zip your lips did you know that was a king james bible expression oh what modern bible say and go with us to be us what's it say wow they exactly knew who he was from chapter 17 there is the catholic church a man is called a priest and he's called a father 1400 years before jesus christ is ever born 1430 years before jesus christ ever suffers and dies and these group of people not one man micah this this uh, tribe of israel this group of men have now incorporated as a nation a father and a priest and jesus said call no man your father is it better for thee to be a priest unto the house of one man or that thou be a priest unto a tribe and a family in israel now mark that by the time we get to the end of this chapter which is better have one man or a whole nation and each of the 12 tribes i know that they're one of, of jacob but aren't they like a whole nation wouldn't you like to have a mega church you got one man right here but wouldn't you like to have a whole city a whole group a whole children of the of the children of jacob wouldn't you like to have all the masses of numbers Imagine that, a mega church in verse 19 of chapter 18 of Judges. That's a mega church. There's the offering. We'll give you plenty of people. So what did the priest do? And the priest's heart was glad. <laughs> now remember, they were going to steal the stuff. Now watch what he does. He took the ephod and the teraphim and the graven image and went in the midst of the people. He steals. He's like to the to the spies, the five men. No, put those stuff down. No, we're ta no, no, no. Just put it. I'll take it. Let me carry it. The gods. You know that pope is carried around by the people of the church. Now he's taking part of the of the tribe of Gersh. Uh, not Gershom. Um. Oh man, can't think of the name now. Not Gershon. The ones that were to carry the ark. Who? Korah, the Korahites. He is taking the responsibility of Korahites now. Let me take care of Micah's golden and great images. The great ark, the great incense altar. I will carry them. You don't need to steal them, I'll take them. And the priest's heart was glad and took the ephod and the teraphim, the graven image, and went in the midst of the people. So now he's joining them. You don't need to steal. I'll go voluntarily. So they turned and departed and put the little ones and the cattle. Do you know what the official document of the Roman Catholic Church and the popes and the cardinals are called? It's called a bull. And that's official documentation of the church hierarchy, the bull. 
Funny how the words they use. And the carriage, that's the first time carriage shows up before them. So he loads up his, his family. He loads up the gods of Micah. Puts them in the car. Well, let's go. And when they were a good way from the house of Micah, the men that were in the house, this near to Micah's house, his family, the neighborhood, were gathered together and overtook the children of Dan. And they cried unto the children of Dan, and they turned their faces and said unto Micah, What well, ailest thee that thou comest with a company? Such a company. He said to him, You have taken away my gods. Small G O D S, Genesis 31 19. Genesis 31 19. You know, you can't steal my God. You can break into my church and you can steal anything you want, but you're not going to steal my God. Genesis 31 19. You may steal my Bible, but it's not my God. Thy words have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against thee. You can't take my heart. You know, you can offend a Catholic if you destroy his God by chopping off the head of a statue. You can, a couple years ago, people were getting offended because they were going to the nativity scenes and stealing baby Jesus. No, you're not stealing. That's not Jesus. That's a porcelain doll. If you have a God that can be stolen, you don't have God. Genesis 31, 19. And Laban went to shear his sheep. And Rachel had stolen the images that were her father's. Oh, look at that. Here's gods that can be stolen. So they come together. Jacob and Laban. In verse 30, same chapter, 31-30. And now, though you wouldest needs be gone, because thou sore longest for thy father's house, you miss your father's house. Cry, baby. Yet, wherefore hast thou stolen my gods? That's the same thing that's going on in Judges. That's the same exact thing. You stole my gods. And again, if you got gods that can be stolen, you got trouble. You got problems. Chapter 35 of Genesis. Verse 2. What's going to happen with Ephraim? What's going to happen with Dan? Bible with Bible. Genesis 35, verse 2. We read in Hosea, Ephraim is joined to idols. Let him alone. I thought it was just Micah's house. In Genesis 35, 2, then Jacob said to the household, and all that were with him, put away the strange gods that are among you, and be clean, and change your dark garments. That's the first time change that shows up. And let us arise and go up to Bethel. And I will make there an altar unto God, who answered me in the day of my distress, first time that showed up, and was with me in the way which I went. And they gave unto Jacob all the strange gods, G-O-D-S, which were in their hand. Wait a minute, I thought Rachel just had the God. I thought Rachel had it. Chapter 31, Rachel stole the God. Chapter 35, everybody's got gods now. And Jacob takes all those gods and buries them. Good for you, Jacob. So what's going to happen with Ephraim? He's joined idols. Let him alone. 
What's going to happen with Ephraim and Dan? You've got a church system today based upon the Egyptian, based upon the Babylonian, and based upon chapter 17 and 18 of imagery and idolatry. We'll get to that in a moment. His gods have been stolen, verse 24 of Judges. You have taken away my gods, which I made. Now that's not a god. There he goes. Micah says, I am the creator of my gods. And you stole my gods. Let me reverse Micah. I am the creation of the creator that is my God. If anything can steal anything, they can man steal me, but they can't steal my God. Does he even know what he's saying? He's the one that paid that founder to make those images. There is the Catholic Church that has their Im imagery and their idolatry. Somebody made them and they can say, my God, which I made or paid for. He didn't make them. Verse 4, chapter 17. And he restored the money unto his mother. And his mother took 200 shekels and gave them unto the founder. He didn't make them. He paid for them. But the charge of God goes, I made them. And the priest, you're gone away, and what have I not more? What, what, what religion do I have now? I have dust. And what is this that you say unto me, what ails thee? What do you mean, what, what ails me? You stole my gods, you stole my priest, stole my cattle. And the children danced in unto him. Let not thy voice be heard amongst us. You better shut up. These angry fellows run upon thee. We're going to kill you. Thou lose thy life and the lives of thy household. Man, there's a threat. And the children of Dan went their way. And when Micah saw that they were too strong for him, he turned and went back unto his house. No gods. He's godless now. His gods have been, have been caught away. And they took the things which Micah had made. Notice how the Holy Spirit put that. And the priests which he had. And came to the Laish unto the people that were, at, that were quiet and secure. And they smote them with the edge of the sword and burnt the city with fire. And there was no deliverer because it was far from Zidon. And they had no business with any man. There was no help for these people. It was in the valley that lieth by Beth Rio. And they built a city and dwelt therein. And they called the name of the city Dan. Dan to Bathsheba. Here it is. After the Dan their father, who was born unto Israel, Jacob. Howbeit the name of the city was Laish at first, but now it's Dan. And that was the only last period of this chapter, but it's not. And the children of Dan set up the graven image. And Jonathan, the son of Gershom, the son of Manasseh, he and his sons were priests to the tribe of Dan. They're not even Levite priests now. They're just anybody who paid a fee. Unto the day of the captivity of the land. Now, if you think the Vatican is the home of the Catholic Church with idolatry and imagery and a priest called Father, I say, no, it's not. The city of Dan is one of the homes, one of the houses of an image of priests that are not Levites who you would call Father. Fourteen hundred B.C. Almost 606 years before any Catholic Church existed. Anywhere between. And when you set up verse 30. This graven image. This religion of fatherhood priest. It is a stolen religion of Micah. And the Catholic Church is a stolen religion of Babylonia. Of Alexandria. And of Egypt, which is Alexandria. 
A lot of things that that Catholic Church will do if you get a book, Babylon, Mystery Babylon. It has already been done. It is already it is nothing new. They just carried it over. Long before the Vatican, there is a city set with priests called fathers and imagery that likens to the Catholic Church. And the captivity, that's Second Kings 19. And they set them in Micah's, and they, uh, and they set them up Micah's graven image, which he made, the stolen, uh, the stolen religion. All the time the house of God was in Shiloh. Now look at the Holy Spirit there. The house of God, the true God is over there. The imagery and idolatry is over there. Two separate places and they're not the same. That Catholic Church is nothing of God. That's over there. We're over here. Alexandria is here. That's one religion. That's one Bible. Antioch is another where. That's where Christians were first called Christians. That's where our Bible comes from. Antioch. Antioch is not Alexandria, and Alexandria is not Antioch. Exodus 20. I want to read you something. Fair use law. I'm going to use a fair use law for, for teaching, for explaining. And 20 verse 1. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which has brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, Micah, Dan, or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above. And he doesn't tell us what that image was. Or it's in the earth, beneath, or that is in the waters under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, or serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visit the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation. I'm going to exclude you from the 144,000. How is that? How many generations is that? Of them that hate me. You hate me, Micah. You hate me, Dan. You hate me, church, that has this. And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandment. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless that take his name, the name in vain. Okay, verse, I mean, the first commandment is verse 3. The, the second commandment is verse 4. The third commandment is verse 7. Okay? Roman Catechism of the Catholic Church. It is completely ordained by the Catholic Church, this book I hold. It can be printed. This is official documentation documentation of the Catholic Church and their beliefs. Alright, so let me read to you the second commandment of the Catholic Church. Right? And I already read it to you, didn't I? Second commandment. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. You have heard... Is that the second commandment? That's the third. What happened to idolatry? What happened to verses 3 to 6? It has been removed from the Bible. Why? Because we got images and idolatry. We don't want to kick ourselves in the britches. Why would you remove that? Let's see what other doctrines and teachings they have. A couple of them here. All right. Idolatry. Ooh, you believe they have something here about idolatry? I'll read it to you. Uh, whatever these numbers mean, I don't know what they mean, but 2112. Idolatry. The first commandment condemns polyism. It requires man neither to believe in nor to venerate other deep divinities than the one true God. I thought Mary was a god. Scripture constantly recalls the rejection of idols, of silver and gold, the work of man's hands. It says this is in their book. But they removed the second commandment. They have mouths, but they do not speak. Eyes, but they do not see. 
If you look at your statues, their empty idols make their worshippers empty. Those who make them are like them. So are all the all who trust in him. God, however, is a living God who gives life and intervenes in history. Idolatry twenty one thirteen not only refers to false pagan worship, it remains a constant temptation to faith. Idolatry consists of divining what is what is not God. Man commits idolatry whenever he honors and reverence a creature in place of God. Whether this be gods or demons, for example, Satanism, power, pleasure, race, ancestry, the state, money, etc. Jesus said you cannot serve God and mammon. Many martyrs die for not adoring the beast, refusing even to simulate such worship. Idolatry rejects the unique lordship of God. Now, can you imagine God going to open up their catechism and read to them what idolatry is? And you are three five forward. You got the rotary. I mean, the rotary. Rosary. rosary. You got Mary's statue. You got the heart of Jesus. And your own catechism tells you it's wrong, but you say it's okay. Something wrong. Eighteen fifty two to different kinds of sins. There are a great many kinds of sins. Scripture provides several lists of them. In the letter to the Galatians, contrast the works of the flesh with the fruit of the spirit. Now the works of the flesh are plain. It's fornication, impurity, lasciviousness, idolatry, sorcery. Wait a minute, doesn't your priest hold that whole stuff and say, fee fi fo fum that this body of bread becomes the literal body and the little blood of Jesus? Isn't that magic? And you can say that, and when I grew up in the Catholic Church, three of them, all around the Catholic Church there are idols, there are images, there are statues. And you pray to them. And you seek to them. And the, the catechism says they can't answer you. What about Luther? I mean, didn't he leave the Catholic Church? He had to clean it up. Luther. Ten Commandments. Ready? Commandment number one. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. What does this mean? We shall fear, love, and trust in God above all things. That's great. I like that, right? That sounds good. Second commandment. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord and thy God in vain. What does this mean? Third commandment, remember the Sabbath. You see, Luther is the cleaned up Catholic Church. He just doesn't take indulgences. He's got the same commandments that the Catholic Church has. And Luther, if you were to have his Bible, what's his Bible do with Exodus 20? It removes the second commandment, three or four verses. And one more place here. Where is it? What does, what does God forbid in the first commandment? God forbids us to have other gods instead of him or besides him. That's idolatry. But you remove the second commandment that involves idolatry. So you cannot study, and it's funny because I've seen Catholic churches on their thing say we have Bible study. All right. You cannot study in a Catholic church, Judges 17, verse 8, and chapter 18. You can't study those two chapters. And if you do, the priest or the teacher, whoever it's going to be, he is going to give you the interpretation of the church that they are just okay, but they're, they haven't worshipped up other gods. They're just using them as an aid for a help to get to God. And verse 31, and they set them up Micah's graven image that's one which he made he made that is what the second commandment says you should not do shall not make and all the time the house of God that's on the other side was in Shiloh imagery religion has nothing to do with God as far as the east is from the west 
In order to do that, they just take out that second commandment. And if you're going through a theft store and you learn and you can buy wonderful things at a theft store. And if you happen to be walking by and you see something that says the Ten Commandments, pick it up and read it and see which one it is. We read God's. Thou shalt have no other, thou shalt not make any idols, imagery, images, and all that. We saw two religions. Get rid of it. They're hiding something. 